Hi everyone, welcome to Touch Base Thursday for March 7th. I'm so excited to be back with you after taking a week off last week. Um, I appreciate all of your understanding. Um, I had a huge fundraiser um, that most of you know about, and so I'll talk to you a little bit about that fundraiser, but that is why I was not able to be live with you all last week. Um, so I'll, I'll give it a couple minutes here for some of you to log on. If you're seeing me and you're watching my, um, my live right now, please um, comment so that I know that you're out there. And we will get started here in just a couple of moments as I also refresh my page. So um, it's going to take a couple minutes here. I'm just letting myself, my, my computer here refresh. Okay, I think, I think I'm on. For some reason, I'm not able to see it. Nicole, are you able to see my live right now? Anyway, I believe I'm here. My computer's just not refreshing the way that it would. Oh, there it is. Okay, I see I have a couple of you. Hi, Sonia. So yes, I am live, so I feel better now. I wasn't seeing my video pop up in my own news feed, so I was kind of doubting myself. Anyway, welcome to Thursday, March 7th for our Touch Base Thursday. Um, these projects that I'm gonna be sharing with you today will for sure get you in the spring spirit, um, even though it is starting to feel a little bit like spring here in Michigan, so yay. Um, at least the sun is shining, it's so cold, but our days are getting longer. Um, we changed to daylight savings time this weekend, and that always is a little bit of a sign of spring coming because we have our sunshine longer and things like that. So um, anyway, um, update on my fundraiser, because I know that some of you have been asking me, hi Donna, hi Shireen, um, some of you have been asking me about my fundraiser and how it went. So um, I've talked about my cystic fibrosis fundraiser on my Facebook Lives for, gosh, several weeks. And it was just so overwhelming and so touching. We had about 57 women in attendance. And one guy, can't forget um, Pete, my friend Melissa's husband was there as well. And um, we, we haven't figured out all of the numbers yet, but we do know that we surpassed what we raised last year, which was $3,300 for cystic fibrosis. And so um, I'll definitely report that back. Um, I have not, I've been so busy. So if I've been a little bit of MIA with some of my Facebook posts, I promise you I'll be back on it next week. Uh, but just playing catch up from that event and unpacking and getting things sorted and, and just getting things back to a routine. Um, it takes a lot of work to put on an event like that, um, but it's so rewarding, so, so rewarding. So anyway, a couple of things. First of all, as you guys know, if you share my video, you get into the drawing to receive goodies. And last time we were together, it was two weeks ago, um, the items that I was going to be giving away tonight was the um, Poppy Parade ribbon and the um, Tropical Elements um, embellishments. And so we have two winners. The winner of the, um, the ribbon is Penny O'Ram. So congratulations, Penny. Penny, these will come in your next package that I send to you. Um, I send things to Penny very regularly. She's part of my scrapbook club. So Penny, those will get to you in one of your next packages. And then the other item was those Tropical Elements. And the winner of those is Elizabeth Merkel. So um, I've been calling her Beth, and I had to verify that was okay. And it is okay. Um, so uh, you'll be getting those in the mail as well from me in the next, um, hopefully tomorrow or early next week. Um, I want to thank all of you that um, were played bingo with me this last week. I had a lot of fun. Bingo prizes are going out tomorrow. So I've had a couple questions from some of you asking me how my online bingo works. So I'm just going to take a couple of minutes and explain it because it's a lot of fun. And I think I've got it streamlined to where it takes us about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. And basically we, I send you in advance a make and take kit to make four projects. Usually it's cards. I send a bolt of ribbon or an embellishment that you'll use on those projects. And then I make those projects with you um, during during a live video similar to what you're watching tonight and I actually play bingo the same way in which we are live right here tonight as well so I send you the bingo cards in your kit so you get your make and takes you get your your embellishment and you get your bingo cards and you play the same two bingo cards so you're playing two cards double the chance of winning and we play four games. Um, I threw in a surprise fifth game this last week because I had some celebration items from the order that I put in for the prizes. And then I also did door prizes. All of their names were into a bucket and we drew out three door prizes um, for some people to win um, stamp sets, embellishments, things like that. But it is a lot of fun, a lot of fun. 
and the cost is only forty dollars and so it's just a nice little break in the from the, the traditional um classes and things to have a little bit of fun and win some bingo prizes and the prizes are all stamping up bundles so they're valued at anywhere between thirty one dollars all the way up to fifty dollars so anyway lots of fun my next one i do them every other month so my next one will be in um in may and i'm happy to announce that my virtual party was a huge success and i want to thank a handful of you that gave me some comments and some feedback on how i can do that a little bit differently and i loved all of the positive notes i received about that as well but one of the things i'm going to be doing a little bit differently is i'm going to actually include a make and take packet similar to how i do my bingo so the make and take packet will be optional but if anybody wants to stamp the projects that i'm going to be showcasing um, i'll come up with a, a cost of that packet and ship it to you in advance and then you can stamp along with me during that virtual um, part where we are doing some stamping presentations so I'm really hoping um, that that will be well received and that we would be a little bit more interactive with all of you to actually stamp along with me so I love that suggestion um, that was one I got from Marianne McGinnis so thank you Marianne um, I love it when I get your guys's feedback because it makes it so um, that I can improve what I do for all of you so anyway, up for grabs this week for those of you that share my share my video. So when I say share my video, you need to share it on your page and just say, hey, check it out, Kim's live. And she's awesome. I'm joking. But anyway, um, up for grabs this week is a package of dimensionals because we all need some dimensionals. And then we have a bolt of the Granny Apple Green Ribbon. And this, this is a really pretty green color. Um, love it. I was designing some cards earlier tonight before I went live using the Best Catch bundle, which you, a couple of my bingo um, gales got to see a sneak peek of two of those four cards last night. And I designed the other two. And that will be an online and a local class that I'll be offering probably in not till May. <laughs> But um, my scrapbook pages are beautiful with that. So I'm actually going to be doing a Facebook Live showcasing some of the techniques and the sponging techniques that I used in that. Um, but that's, again, those are the kind of perks you get by being involved in some of my events. You get sneak peeks and things. But one of the cards that I curated for that used this Granny Apple Green. That's where I was going with the Granny Apple Green. Um, and I love this green. It's so, so pretty. Okay, a few announcements before we transition down and we do some stamping fun. Um, and I will be posting about these on my page. And again, I apologize this week. I posted some, but not like I normally do. But um, celebration coordination is in full swing. So that is those awesome coordinating framelits that go with some of the stamp sets for celebration. Now, I will tell you that if you liked the frog, the hoppy together um stamp set the framelits are already sold out in seven days here in north america that is just amazing that they're already sold out so if you want the framelits that coordinate with the hello cupcake the lasting lily and the painted season i encourage you to get those orders in as soon as possible if you are a club member and you're wanting those framelits let me know. I can order it. I know a lot of times the club orders go in at the end. I'm waiting for all my clubs to get together and meet. But I have a way that I can order these for you right away. And they coordinate really well together. I have all three of them here. I haven't even used my Lily or my cupcake ones yet. I've used my Four Seasons and my um, Lily ones. But um, again, want to make sure you guys know that those framelits are going fast. It was supposed to be the whole month of March or while supplies last. And they are going to definitely be a while supplies last because those cupcakes are already gone so I see we got some more new or I'm sorry the frogs are already gone Nicole corrected me so anyway I see we have a lot more of you joining us joining me so welcome I'm happy to have you all here um, then there's also some um, celebration third release items that have come out and um, the third release items are all products from the annual catalog so I know there's not, there's not really quite the sense of urgency on those as there is on these framelits. Um, so the, the third release is basically getting something for free with a $50 order. And I have a graphic that I'll be posting later tonight showing you what those additional items are out of the um, occasions. I'm sorry, the annual catalog. The other awesome thing is um, when they started doing the, the whole painted blooms, um, or painted seasons bundle, which was this awesome stamp set in the coordinating paper, you had to put in a $100 order to get both of them. They've now offered that paper with just a $50 order. 
So you're able to now get the Painted Seasons Designer Series paper with just a $50 order. But you'll be seeing a lot of posts about that in the next couple days. Um, I've got lots of lists started of things that I need to share with all of you. Um, my online classes for this month, I have one of them already posted. So one of them is this beautiful floral romance card class. And I know that I posted this a couple of days ago. The class includes all of the supplies to make um, 16 cards, four of each one of these cards, and all the supplies come already cut. And the class includes a ton of product because I use a ton of product on these cards. So you will get a whole package of the de designer series paper. That's a $14 paper pack because it's got vellum in it. You will receive a full package of the frosted flowers and you'll receive a whole bolt of the ribbon. It's on back order right now, but I'm hopeful to get it soon. Um, if I don't get it in time for these classes to go out, I'm gonna um, substitute with some of the um, ruffled fresh fig. That's the awesome thing about having so many things that color coordinate, is that I can then substitute with another color and it's gonna match perfectly. And then finally, it also includes a package of these seals. So lots of product in this class that you'll be able to use on additional cards, but they are absolutely gorgeous. And then there's also an option there to purchase the class, including the bundle, if you wanted the stamp set and coordinating framelits as well. So this one, I already have a link there for you. Um, and the picture of the cards are all there. Um, my next class will be posting here. You, it's actually posted as a local class, but it's also going to be offered as an online class. And it is my Beauty Abounds class. So this is some of the cards that I showcased on a Facebook Live a couple weeks ago when I first designed them. And um, it actually uses some of the awesome, um, lovely lipstick and Grapefruit Grove uh, foil sheets that you can't even get anymore. Um, so in this class, like I said, I'll be having the link posted soon. It's uh, going to include 10 cards, and it will include some, some rhinestones. I'll include the framelits if anybody's interested in that in the, in the stamp set. So this one will be posted um, if, hopefully tomorrow um, if I have a chance to do that over my lunch hour. So anyway, those are my online classes for this month. And then I'm also working on an online class using the Happy Tales um, dog bundle. And that was my video that I did this past week. So um, if you haven't checked out my Tuesday video, um, check it out because I did do a really cute card using the Happy Tales bundle. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is I posted on my group page um, the link to order Basement Bunch apparel. So like this is my awesome... Um, little apparel it's got my logo on the back but um <clears throat> but um basically um, my friend Tamara Davis has an Etsy store and she's now um, doing all the screen printing for my merchandise and I wanted to make sure you guys knew that when I posted it it posted a picture of the sweatshirts but if you look in the description on that post there are long sleeve t-shirts there are short sleeve t-shirts there are crew sweatshirts zip up hoodies as well as an awesome mug yes it's pink sorry it has to be pink um that has the basement bunch stampers on it and you can get your name put on the back so um i have my mine just shipped today my mug i cannot wait to get it because i'm a huge coffee drinker um so anyway just wanted to make sure that you guys knew about that that it wasn't just sweatshirts um there's also t-shirts long sleeve shirts and it's nice to wear those shirts when we go to events or when you're crafting and stamping because it's nice to feel like you belong to a group and and i love my group and love all of you so it just melts my heart when all of you guys um, wear your, your basement bunch shirts. Um, and so right now they're only available in black. Someone had asked me that question. Uh, once, probably next year in the fall um, or spring, actually fall, we're coming into spring, I'll um, change the color to something different. It's just really hard for Tamara to stock a bunch of that kind of stuff when she's not sure how much of it's going to be selling. And so I just went with black for right now. But my logo shows up so awesome on it. So um, anyway, if you have any questions on that or can't find the, the post about that, let me know. I have direct links to her Etsy store that I can send you guys for that as well. Um, Paper Pumpkin. So I had a couple of you join Paper Pumpkin. I cannot wait for you guys to get your first kits. Um, Paper Pumpkin is a monthly subscription. I talked about it a couple weeks ago, but it's, it's pretty awesome for new crafters or even the seasoned crafters who just want to kind of have a, a project in a box, don't have to think about it, just sit down and make. It's only $19.95 a month and with when plus shipping, um, so there are no plus tax. That includes the $19.95 includes the shipping. And what's awesome about that is there's no commitment that you don't have to join it for five months, six months, ten months, whatever. You can join it and then you can even log in and change your membership and say skip a month or anything like that. 
But um, if you join by March 10th, so you only have three days left, three days left, you will get um, a free stamp set to commemorate the sixth birthday of Paper Pumpkin. So I wanted to make sure that you guys knew about that as well. Um, so with that, I think that's all the announcements that I had. Um, like I said, celebration coordination, those framelits, if you want them, get them ASAP. Don't wait. Um, they are while supplies last. We were told the month of March or while supplies last. So um, make sure you get those right away. Um, my ordering promotion for tonight is I'm, I'm going to be showing you five cards a cute little 3D, well, two 3D projects. And so my um, ordering promotion tonight, and I'll be showing you the host code, is if you put in a minimum $30 order with me, you will receive the two um, the two 3D projects and one of the cards that I'm gonna be sharing with you. And so tonight I'm focusing in on the Fable Friends stamp set, which is an awesome one for Thinking Spring, and the beautiful Gingham Gala Designer Series paper. It's the little six by six paper in all the fright, fun, bright spring colors. So with that, I'm gonna transition down to my stamp area, and I'm gonna start with one of the 3D projects first, and it's so cute, so be prepared. It's cuteness overload. Um, so I will be back with you just momentarily. Um, I should also mention to you while I'm transitioning down to my stamp area, I have lots of kits left over from some of my previous classes. So if any of you are interested in any of the kits that you may have seen posted, um, I know that Nicole, my daughter-in-law, has been working really hard to get those kits all finalized. So um, she's going to, uh, I might even be posting some of them. Um, we're going to be offering them at a discounted price to get into the hands of those of you that might want to make them. But they're really, really awesome um, cards, and they're all things that I've done in previous classes. So anyway, okay, so this first project, is it not cute, you guys? Look at this project. I love, love these suckers. So some of you may have seen these suckers when you, um, when you, uh, we're at my Cystic Fibrosis event because these were my projects that I had planned to do with all of you last Thursday when I had to um, cancel to be able to get into my venue um, a little bit earlier. But these are the cute suckers that I wanted to share with all of you and the cute projects that I made. Now, this is the Gingham Gala Designer Series paper. It comes six by six. And I know someone's going to ask me where I found my suckers. Um... I'm sure there's a good handful of you watching that are already saying Amazon because you guys know me that well. Yes, I found the suckers on Amazon. Um, they came in a box with these assorted different colors. And what I thought was so awesome was that they color coordinate so well with our paper. The only one I had to change up was the purple, but purple and paint goes so well together. So um, I forget how much they were, but I believe I got a dozen of these suckers. Um, and they were not that expensive at all. And I want to show you how to make this cute little paper fold. Some of you may have seen me do this before where I put a Ghirardelli chocolate in them. And so this time I'm going to make them and make it into a sucker. So if you do not have this Gingham Gala Designer Series paper, it is on back order, but only for about a week. Um, I really think you should get it because it is gorgeous and it is screaming spring no matter how you look at it. The paper comes in these, you get the whole pack. I think it's um, 40 some sheets, but you get the whole pack of paper and you get all these different colors. So the colors are Balmy Blue and um, Lemon Lime Twist, Grapefruit Grove, Highland Heather and Daffodil Delight. So really, really pretty spring themed papers. And since pink is my favorite color, we're going to make the purple one tonight. And I'm gonna show you guys how easy these are to put together. Now I also used some of our doilies. Now I did put a glue dot on the back of these suckers to keep them in, but I did use some of our doilies on these as well. And I may have taken the package out of my basket only because I was crafting with them earlier, but it's fine. You guys will, uh, oh no, here they are. So these are the doilies and these are only $4.50 and I believe you get 24 of them. Now I will tell you that these doilies are one of the third release items that you can get these doilies for free with a $50 um, Stampin' Up! order. So let me get these out of the way for a minute um, and show you how I made those. 
So you start with a piece of your Gingham Gala Designer Series paper. It already is six by six. And you're going to, depending on however size or whatever whatever pattern you want spacing out, whether it's the big gingham or the little gingham, you're gonna fold it in a diagonal. So I want the little gingham to be on the outside. So I am just going to fold this in half on a diagonal like so. I'm gonna actually get this out of the way, but I'll talk about it first. So um, a $30 minimum order tonight or tonight or through tomorrow at midnight will get you um, the three projects. It'll get you one of these cute little suckers. It'll get you the next project that I'm gonna show you and it'll get you one of the cards that I'm gonna be showing you. This information is also on my website. If you go to kimsbasementbunch.com and click on um, shop online. It's right on the home screen. The host code is right there as well. It's new for March, so it just started. And you can easily put your order in right there. And I'll know that it is part of my Facebook Live because of the host code. Okay, so we're gonna fold this in half. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this end and we are just going to bring it over to the other end. Now, what I like to tell my customers when they make these is you wanna kind of make sure that your part up here is kind of symmetrical. You don't want to have a lopsided triangle. So, um, and I know there are better ways of doing this where you can make them perfect, but close enough is good enough for me. Um, so, and this is what the joy of this project is, is that it's so simple to do. So I've just folded this one in and I'm gonna go to the other side and I'm gonna fold this one over to the other side. And I'm gonna make sure I get a good crease on that. Okay, now you wouldn't have to um, to glue these down, because I'm gonna show you why, but I choose to. I'm now gonna fold this top one over. But when you open it up like that, it pretty much stays all by itself. But because I don't want this to fall apart, I use some fast fuse on it, and I'm going to glue this down really, really good. So again, before I do that, I'm gonna show you. We just folded this in half. We folded this flap in and this flap over, and then we are going to fold this one down. Ta-da! Isn't that quick, cute, and simple? And then I used one of our punches. This is, I think, though, either the 1 8th, or yeah, this is the 1 8th inch um, hole punch, and I just punched the end of it, just enough to be able to get a sucker stick through it. Uh, maybe. There we go. Okay, and then I also adhered a doily to the back of this using just a little bit of snail. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of that on there. I'm gonna adhere my doily to the back. And bringing in one of those cute little Easter Bunny suckers. I just put this in here like that. So it wants to kind of go all the way down and hide on, and hide on me, which is why I put a glue dot on the back of this and I glue dotted it right to right to my back but look how cute that is so so simple yet a neat little wow gift so how cute would it be to give these to all those grandchildren for easter and have it sitting on their on their little place when you eat whether you have brunch or lunch or whatever you do but how cute so so cute so you could do you know blue ones for all the little boys and purple for the girls and then you can do you know these colors for anybody but so, so cute and so, so simple. And all you would need to be able to make these is the paper and the doilies. That's it. And you wouldn't even have to put a doily behind it. I was kind of going more for the, um, thank you everyone. I'm glad you guys like this project. Um, I was going more for the, the whole spring themed and I really liked the doily behind it. So um, anyway, I would love to see you guys create suckers similar to these as you can um, share with all of us. And um, I love it when you guys post your projects. So please feel free to post them on our, on our group page. Um, I love seeing what all of you create and it's, it helps to inspire all of us actually so anyway that is the first project that I wanted to share with you I'm now going to showcase the second 3d project that I'm going to share with you and it's something that I haven't really used in a Facebook live in quite a while or actually ever and it is this cute little wood crate um, you guys see that okay I'm gonna wait so that I can see it on my camera as well but this is a cute little crate this crate die is from our annual catalog and um, I love it again I haven't showcased this in quite a while and um, 
and it's so cute. So what I did is, and I'm gonna show you the die, the die here in just a bit and show you how to put this together, but I wanted this to look like it was a little um, napkin coming out of the basket with a little doily coming out of it as well. Isn't that adorable? So cute. I then purchased from Amazon some of these, um, these are those um, covered almonds, the, like the yogurt color covered almonds, and I put them in our three by six cello bags. So some of you may not know that we even sell cello bags, but we do. They are three by six and they're gusseted, so they hold a lot of stuff, lots and lots of stuff. And then I just tied it shut with some of our white cotton ribbon and it fit into this little um, crate perfectly. Isn't that awesome? So I'm gonna show you guys how I made this cute little crate. Now the crate dies, like I said, are in our annual catalog and I haven't used them in quite a while. So when I was trying to come up with another project to share with all of you for tonight, I went to the, the annual catalog and said, what do we have for a 3D project that I don't have to reinvent the wheel? And this is what I found. And I'm like, I have not used it in a long time. Now, this is what I used to, to cut out the framelit for the, the crate. You need to cut this out twice because you need two of these. But what I wanted to show you guys is what I do to make my paper go further. So this is the cutout right here. And this is what it looks like when you cut it out. And the pa this is the wood textures paper. And this paper is six by six. And I didn't want to waste it. And so I actually cut a second one out of the same piece of paper, but you can see this is the bottom and this bottom is littler because they didn't have enough paper, but I'm going to be putting those two together to make my box. So no one's going to see that one is not the full bottom. Does that make sense? I think it'll make better sense when I put it together, but it's a way to be able to get one crate out of a six by six piece of, of paper without having to waste any of that paper. These framelits also come with this cute little heart, um, comes with a little rooster. There used to be a stamp set that went with this. Um, when this first came out, a little tag, a star, and a little moon that you could also decorate the front of your crate with as well. So what I did is I ran this through the Big Shot, and I got these two pieces right here. And all that all we're going to do, and I've already folded, so when I ran this through the Big Shot, it gave me crease lines that you can see I've already folded to save me a little bit of time tonight. And what we're going to do is we are going to adhere these together like this. So this one right here is the end, here's the other ends. So I am going to adhere this bottom into here and then bring these up and it will make a perfect little crate. So um, I'm hoping I'm telling you guys this right because I did these projects about a week ago. Well, two weeks, a week and a half ago maybe because I did these for last week and then um, ended up not um, going live with all of you. I will tell you though that with me not going live last week, my mom was in town and I was able to spend last Sunday completely with my mom because um, I didn't have to come downstairs and design much and it was kind of nice to be able to have those projects done already. Okay, so I've glued those two together and I've made the seam for that one on the inside so you can't see it on the outside. And then you're going to put adhesive on these little tabs because those you're going to fold up and in. So remember the tent, those of you I think that were watching my virtual party, I told you that when you're putting things together like a box, you don't wanna have it up, you wanna pretend that you're making a tent and that's how you can remember where you need to put your adhesive. So I'm gonna put some adhesive on these little tabs right here. And from there, I'm simply going to fold this up and fold that up. And I'm gonna glue those seams right together really good. Hi, Judy. See, Judy just joined us. Um, and same here, folding that one up and then taking this one and folding that one up as well. And there you have a cute little crate. Isn't that cute and simple and adorable? Love it. Then I took one of our doilies and this I cut in half because you don't really need to put one on the inside, whoops, because nobody can really see the inside of that. You can see there's no doily on the inside. It's just on the outside. And so I'm gonna put a little bit of adhesive just in the center of my doily. And I'm going to glue that down right here on the outside of it. Kind of center that on the front. And then I have a piece of two by two designer series paper and I use the Gingham Gala. And this I'm going to just fold diagonally, the same as I did that last one, and get a good crease there. 
And then all I'm going to do is adhere this to the front of my crate as well, like so. Isn't that adorable? I think this is the cutest thing ever. How cute would this be for like, again, a little gift to give everybody for, you know, the Easter for their table or for, you know, for uh, baby showers. You can do a baby showers with this as well. Um, from there, like I said, I just simply filled a bag, one of our gusseted bags with some of those yogurt covered. I don't know what they're actually called. If someone knows the actual name of it, um, you can um, comment with what it is. There's a name for these and I forget, but they're really hard. Um, so um, they're a lot harder than I thought they were. So you're probably thinking, how did you find candy to match? So I'm gonna tell you my Amazon searching techniques. So when I was designing some projects with this paper, I knew I wanted to focus on Easter and spring and so I just went on Amazon and I searched for Easter candy and then I also searched for pastel candy these came up under pastel candy and the suckers came up under Easter candy so you just got to get creative with your searching and you know stuff is you know the suckers were probably six or seven dollars but to me they're so cute I mean why would you not want to pay six or seven dollars for those cute suckers um, and, and these as well. So if, again, if anybody puts in that $30 order, I will not be putting the crate together. You will get all the supplies to put it together yourself, but I will provide a little bag of candy for you to put in there because I've got lots of these candies left. Um, so this is the second 3D project that I wanted to share with you. Again, this paper is our Wood Textures Designer Series paper. It comes six by six and I love it. It's great for these kinds of things. And I use this paper on some of my projects with my best catch projects as well that you'll probably see in a couple of weeks on a Facebook Live. Um, but yeah, love that paper. Okay, the last thing that I want to share with you is some cards that I created using this um, Gingham Gala Designer Series paper and the Fable Friends stamp set. And so what I'm going to be talking to you all about a little bit tonight is some of the coloring methods that I use to color some of these cards. Now, I know that I've talked about coloring before, but I still get lots of questions on which ink do I use for which, which color, and it's a lot to remember. So, um, hi, Elizabeth. And so my thought was to share with you how I... Um, some of the methods that you're going to use and I have a neat little technique that I'm going to share with you how I created this card making her cape match that isn't that pretty cool now this class right here will be an online class that I will be offering next month just in time for Easter and for spring and so I'll be including in the in the class some of the ribbon some of the paper I'll use your paper to cut your card supplies out of but this will be a class that you're going to be seeing posted here um, next month it's so cute. This class will also be offered online or um, local here in my basement. So it's a class that you guys will also be able to take advantage of for those of you that come here on a regular basis. And so what I'm going to start with is my little goose card because I want to show you how simple it is to do this. What I call the, I'm not sure what you want to call this technique. There's a name for it. Um, I haven't done it in a long time. And so I decided to do it on this card and, um, and share with you, um, how I exactly did that. So let me find my supplies for this card and we will make this card together. I might need to have Nicole get me some um, stays on ink though and the memento. Oh, I have them. Never mind, Nicole. So I keep yes, mentioning Nicole's name. Nicole comes here a lot. She lives on the road for me, and she's my daughter-in-law. She comes here a lot on Thursday nights. Um, she's my one of my kit makers. So those of you that purchased my kits, um, she works behind the scenes, and she's putting together kits right now, I believe, for sweet Tammy. If Tammy is still watching out there, um, Tammy, she's putting together your... Um, She's putting together your uh, Happiness Blooms kit and your birthday card kit, I do believe. So, okay, I'm going to be using the, um, the Grapefruit Grove. And um, I've cut this. This is your typical card base. This is your five and a half by eight and a half, folded at four and a quarter. Now you could also use your bone folder and get a good crisp fold on that. I then have a piece of Whisper White, cut five and a quarter by four. Now I will, what I've been doing with my Facebook Lives is after my lives are over, um, either the, the same evening or if not in the morning. Hi, Michelle. Um, I may, um, I posted the directions or the, the measurements to my projects. So I will 
post these measurements out there for all of you. Um, usually I go back and edit my description so that you guys are able to have these dimensions. Um, also as a reminder, all of my Facebook Lives get posted to my YouTube channel, so you can always go back out there and watch them as well if they get lost in your news feed. So this right here is five and a quarter by four, and then this designer series piece is five by three and three quarters. And I'm just going to glue these two pieces together and I chose to use the smaller checks just because I like them a lot. Whoa, there we go. And then I'm using this white cotton ribbon. I really like this ribbon. I've been using it on a lot of projects. And um, we're going to actually make this card from start to finish just because I want you guys to see how easy it is to make these. Um, if I can find some glue dots. So I might make Nicole get up to get me some glue dots. She's like, okay. Um, the other thing I used on all of these cards is the layering ovals. If you don't have the layering ovals yet, they're a must have. Um, these are amazing framelits and I use them on a lot of my projects, a lot of my scrapbook um, uh, pages as well. Um, for those of you that might not know, I have a scrapbook um, uh, club and a card club where you can get a kit every month and all your commitment is is a $25 order um, for the scrapbook club, $33 order for cards, and you get to be the hostess one of the 10 months. Um, the only thing is you do have to commit to 10 months of putting in an order, and you, but you get 10 months of, of stuff. So um, if you guys want more information on that, just let me know. I know that um, Penny and Cindy, who are probably watching, Penny's been with me for at least a year and a half, maybe two years, and Cindy's been with me for at least a year. And I send all of them their supplies every month. Now, there are times that I forget something, but I will make it right and make sure you guys get your stuff. But I think that we, for the most part, do pretty good with our kits, um, for the most part. Okay, and so then we are going to adhere this down to our card base. And yes, I'm using a ton of adhesive. I don't need to be using that much adhesive. Okay, and then in advance, I stamped my little goose. So this is from the Fable Friends stamp set. And I know I showed you guys this when I was um, when I was live and you got to see me, but I want you guys to see this actually up close. This is so cute and so timely for birthdays or for Easter, for spring, for babies. I love it. Very nice stamp set. This will also be an add-on um, option for my um, online class that I will be uh, offering next month as well. And so what I did is I simply colored this goose. This is using the Grapefruit Grove marker. And so when I say the Grapefruit Grove marker, it is our stamp and write marker. Now these are our water-based markers. So because this is water-based, um, I had to use a, a, a stays on ink pad. So I want to explain that to you guys so that you understand how this works. So you need to have one alcohol and one water based when you're stamping. You cannot have them both be water or both be alcohol. So this is your alcohol based. This is a stays on ink, meaning it's going to stay wherever you stamp it. So if you get it on your clothes, guess what? You have a stain on your clothes. These are water based. So if you get this on your clothes, it's going to come out just to kind of give you a little bit of an idea of how, what the difference is between those two. So if you're doing anything with water, your water coloring, you're using watercolor pencils, you're using your aqua painters, anything with water, you must use your stays on black. Okay, you have to use your stays on black. Um, if you are using our blends, so our blends are an alcohol-based marker. Okay, so these are our alcohol-based markers. If you're using our blends, you must use our Memento ink. This then becomes your water-based ink. Okay, so you got to have some, you got to have a water and you got to have an alcohol. If they're both alcohol or both water, they're going to bleed and you're going to ruin your markers. Trust me, I almost did that um, earlier this tonight. So um, this is also my go-to black ink pad if I want to just stamp sentiments. Um, I use the Memento. It's easier to clean off your stamps. It comes right off with your my Simply Chamois. Um, the stays on, doesn't come off as well, and you have to use a special cleaner that we sell in our annual catalog. Um, but if you're looking at doing any kind of watercoloring, or using blends, you will need to invest in both of these ink pads, okay? 
I just think it's a good idea to have them both on hand. So for this purposes of this coloring, I simply use the Stampin' Write markers that are in our annual catalog. Um, those of you who are not familiar with our markers, there's one side that's kind of your wider side, so that's more broad. And you can tell by the strip right here, it's the wide, the white strip. This strip on here is a little, so that's your more narrow tipped one. And all I did was I colored in her hat and I'm not going to actually color all of it but I want you guys to see how awesome the coordination of products is between our paper and our marker again Stampin' Up! makes it so easy for us because you know it's so so cool that they all match okay so from there I just simply colored all of the um, her feet and her her beak and her hat what I want to share with you is how I Oh, and this is another neat thing. So this I have on the left side, but on my sample, it's on the right side. So because of the way I did it, I can just grab it and move it right over. Isn't that cool? Because I did it in my little cheater way. So anyway, um, I want to show you how I pieced on her cape. So you'll see my sample here. Her cape is the same paper that I used right here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a scrap piece of paper and you're gonna stamp your image. Now I would not have needed to stamp the entire image. It only, only needed to be big enough for me to cut out her cape. Now there's a, a trick to it when you're cutting this out because you still want this detailed edge. You still want the stamped image. So you do not want to cut on the black line you want to cut right next to the black line so that you can still see the black line and you don't lose the detail I hope that makes sense so I'm gonna actually cut this out for you and you'll see what I mean I am cutting next to that black line I am NOT cutting on the black line I want all of that black line intact so it looks like I stamped directly onto that paper without um, doing um, doing that actually you know like I stamped it right there so I'm just gonna cut this out isn't this a cool little technique so you could do this with all kinds of things that you wanted to make the clothes look different on people on little stamped people on um, cars if you wanted to give the car a pattern any of that kind of stuff it's such a cool little technique and then from there so you can see that I've got all those black lines on there can you tell that I've got them all on there? So from there, you're just gonna simply adhere this down onto my card. And this you wanna make sure you give it some really good adhesive because you don't want this to come up. And I'm just gonna replace this on my card like so. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that so cool? I mean, I think that people, that's a nice wow and it's so simple. But again, the secret there is that you really have to cut around that black line. If you lose the detail of the black line, you're not going to be able to, um, it's not going to look the same. You're going to miss some of that detail. So anyway, that is that card that I shared with all of you. And then I stamped Easter greetings on it. Cute, simple Easter. Now this could also be, the neat thing with this stamp set is you get other greetings in it as well. You get one that says, I'm glad we're friends. Um, you get an Easter greeting. Um, happy spring darling baby and so I use the, all of those sayings on these cards because I need all of those different cards um, the next one that I'm going to share with you is well this one I'll show, show you we're not going to actually make this one but this one I did the exact same thing with his shirt I pieced his shirt together using some of the green now this I use the bigger checks but I use the smaller checks on his shirt this is the coloring technique that I wanted to share with you guys, is how I colored the little bunny. And I was talking earlier with Cindy about coloring, and these two cards I used the watercolor pencils. So these I had to stamp in the stays on, and I'm gonna actually bring in a piece of cardstock, and I am going to show you guys how I colored them. So because I used the watercolor pencils, we need to use the stays on. And I need to get him on a block. So let me find a block. I don't think I have one over here either. So Nicole, Nicole is bringing me this big enough for that, Nicole. Nicole is getting me a block because it's one more thing I don't have here. Um, telling you what, you guys, it's nice to have a helper that I don't have to get up and go get all these things. Um, a big one's fine, Nicole. I'll make it work. Most of my blocks are out and about right now, so we're going to use a great big one, but it'll work just fine. So this is the cling stamps. You guys can see how clingy they are. I love the cling stamps. They stick. 
and I'm not having to worry about putting glue dots on there. So I'm just going to ink this up really good. And I'm just going to stamp this bunny in the corner. Well, I'll put it maybe in the middle so I can cut him out and put him on a card. So I use the stays on ink, okay? And I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see me, I think, a little bit better here as I'm coloring. And um, I'm going to also be using our blender pens. So these blender pens come three to a pack for, I think, $13. And um, I love these blender pens because to me, the colored pencils come to life with the blender pens. Thank you, Tammy. I'm glad that you are liking the awesome things I'm teaching you tonight. So these are the watercolor pencils that we have right now. Um, we, there's also some that I know Cindy had, Cindy Wood, I'm, I'm mentioning Cindy, but her and I were talking earlier today through chat, and she was asking me about coloring with black, and come to find out, I think she has the other set of these markers. A while back, we had these watercolor pencils that were available for a limited time only, and they were, um, they're not available anymore, but these are the original ones that are in our annual catalog on page 202. And I colored him in with the gray on one of my cards. Um, let me bring the samples back in and show you. So I colored him in gray on one of the cards and brown on the other card. And I think I like the gray one better, so I'm going to use the gray marker here. Or gray colored watercolor pencil. So these are all the pencils. And I am going to use my gray. And I'm going to use my pink. And that might be it. So here's the secret to your water coloring with your colored pencils. I feel like um, I'm going to actually color um, his body down here. And when I'm coloring, I'm not really paying much attention to the lines. I'm just uh, coloring. Because the, the, the effect of these watercolor pencils really comes to life when you use the blender pen with them. So again, I'm just coloring. And you can see how I, can you see how I have all those lines in there? They're not very, it's not really that well um, blended. That's where the magic of these comes into play. So these, I'm gonna reach here in front of my, and get a little piece of paper. So these, you just wanna make sure you start with a clean slate. I'm just wiping it onto my white piece of paper. And all you're gonna do is color on top of this. And this right here blends this color in and gets rid of all of those lines. Now these blender pens are already have like a wet substance in them. So you do not have to add anything. I'm hoping you guys can see how it's taking out those lines for me. Let me bring it back up. Can you see how it really meshed that together? And you can really tell that it doesn't have those lines in there anymore. And that is the magic of these watercolor pencils. So people always ask me what's the difference between our Stampin' Up! pencils and regular colored pencils that you would get and see in the store. This is the magic. It's the blending using the blender pen. So I usually tell my customers if you're going to invest in the watercolor pencils, you need to get the blends to go with it. Because otherwise you're not getting the true effect of the watercolor pencil. When you're done coloring with that color, you simply take your marker or your blender pen, kind of run it on top of a piece of white scrap paper, and then you just go on with your next color. So I'm gonna do his pink ears. I could have done the, um, the head of him as well. Now his shirt, like I said, I did the exact same way. I took a piece of that uh, Gingham Gala paper in the lemon lime twist color, and I simply um, pieced it together the same way I showed you how I did it with the other one. But can you see how you really get the effect of what you're looking for when you um, blend that in, okay? Um, I'm hoping that that showed up okay for you guys. Um, you know, I, it's so, so hard to tell on a video. I am gonna actually take the time to color his face in because that way I figure it's gonna be a really good comparison for you guys to see the effect. So, and I'm not doing this, I'm just slapping color on here. There's no, um, I'm not making sure I'm, st I mean, I'm staying in the lines, but I'm not making sure I have full coverage because the blender pen's gonna help with that. So I'm gonna leave this up for a minute so I can make sure you guys can see the difference between his body and his head. How his head has those lines and it looks kind of like it's a messy coloring. Can you kind of see that? I mean, it doesn't look real, real attractive, right? It looks like you had a, your granddaughter color it for, for you. Um, so again, um, here's the magic. And I will hold it up again. Whoa, whoop, there I didn't get the color out. You guys see the pink on his face? Oh, well. So there's one thing not to do, but I'm going to show you how I'm going to fix that. I am going to color on top of it again with my gray. 
and blend that right in. And you will never tell that I did not clean out my brush. Oh, you may be able to tell it a little bit. You, I could add a little bit to the other cheek and make it look like it's rosy cheeks. That's what I could do. But there, can you guys see how awesome that is when you do it that way and you blend that all in? Um, so again, do not get the watercolor pencils without investing in the tool to make them really come to life. Okay? Love that. So if you are doing the watercolor pencils, you will need to invest in the stays on ink if you do not already have it. If you use this other, this wrong ink, that will bleed and you'll have a hot mess. As my daughter Natalie refers to everything as a hot mess lately. So you need stays on ink. You need your watercolor pencil or your blender pens to go with your watercolor pencils. So that is um, another little trick that I want, or another little technique that I wanted to make sure you know, because so many times people think that they just need the watercolor pencils. And I'm here to tell you, you're not gonna get the look that you're looking for unless you have those um, blender pens as well. So again, if you have any questions on anything that I'm sharing with you tonight, you can comment. I will make sure that I respond to your comments. Um, tonight, I do have to pick up my girls from dance in about 45 minutes. Um, my husband is working late tonight, so it might not be till after I pick them up, um, but I will answer any questions that you might have. Um, but that is kind of how I colored this awesome card right here. So that is card number two. Um, the next card that I'm going to share with you, so like I said, I have five of them, and I knew I was going to go along with you guys tonight, but some of you I don't think will mind. So anyway, this is card number three, and I made it for a baby card, and this one I did using just straight out markers. So I used our watercolor markers and our, not our watercolor, our water-based markers. These were the markers that Stampin' Up's had forever. And I used the pineapple, not pineapple punch, I think I used Daffodil Delight, but it might not be on top. But I used the, um, the Daffodil Delight and I used the Mango Medley. And you can see the two different colors um, right there. Now that is just simply col um, coloring. Because I used water-based, I also needed to use alcohol-based ink, okay? So again, that is just simple coloring. Um, so that is your third card. And then these are your um, fourth and fifth cards. And I'll just bring these in together because um, these two were just, again, simple coloring. Now this one I actually used a combination of our watercolor pencils and the marker. I wanted the flower, the flower to be purple and we didn't have a purple um, watercolor pencil. So I used the markers for that. And this one right here, I just colored his shirt, left him white, and colored his um, shirt with the um, Highland Heather marker. So those are the cards that I wanted to share with you tonight. Um, now, in next week, I'll be showcasing for you the, I'm changing it up a little bit. I was going to do it all about embossing, but I'm postponing that for a little bit. I designed for a class earlier this week, and it's for a Mother's Day class. Oh my gosh, you guys, these little dimensional backings get everywhere. Can you guys see I got one in there, stuck in there? <laughs> but I was designing for my um, my Mother's Day, there it came out. I was designing for my Mother's Day, uh, Mother's Day cards, and I was using the Tea Time stamp set. And um, I decided that, well, I gave it away last night for my one of my bingo prizes, and I realized that I never played with it yet. And so I decided to showcase that, and I'm gonna be showcasing the blends in a little bit more detail with you next week and how to do some blending. I know that I've done, I've done that in my Facebook Live probably, I don't know, maybe five, six months ago, maybe even longer, but refreshers are always nice. And I'm gonna show you guys some techniques that I did with those blender pens and the secret to those blender pens because if you don't have the color lifter you're not getting the true effect of the blender the, or the, the stamp and blends so next week we will be focusing in on the blends which are your alcohol based markers that look like this and i'll be showing you guys some awesome techniques with those so anyway, um, thank you guys so much for stopping today. I hope that you've enjoyed my, my projects and my cute little suckers that I showcased first and my um, awesome little crate as well with these goodies in it. Now remember, um, a $30 order placed tonight through tomorrow night at midnight will get you one of the suckers, this cute little project for you to put together, and one of my cards that I featured tonight. And these cards are also going to be a class that I will be offering in my... Um, 
both local and both online. So if you're interested in, in that, you'll be able to um, purchase that class as well. So thank you all so very much for watching tonight. And I hope that you all learned a couple new techniques or new or ways in which to color that you may have forgotten about. And I look forward to seeing you all back here on my page next week at 7 p.m. Eastern. It'll actually be Eastern Daylight Time for us next week. So I'm not sure if some of you maybe don't switch to Daylight Savings Time. You might want to check your, your local time because um, I hate to have you guys miss me. But you can always catch the replay as well. So thank you all so very much for stopping tonight and joining me as I shared some spring projects with you. And I will see you all back here next week. Have a great weekend and talk to you all soon. Bye.